Hey, what is up guys? Marcy here, back to do another video, and today I've got uh, two games that I want to highlight. I may include a third game with no dubbed commentary in it, but it's all gonna be themed around the same mechanic in Command & Conquer 3. Now, I haven't been posting content the last almost two weeks. Had a small break from posting content, plus I am playing a tournament, and uh, I am a, a bit, well, uh, how can I put it? A bit, not worried, but a bit nervous for the tournament. I feel like there's a lot of expectations for me to do well, and I have not yet uh, done so. I played Futurama, made a lot of mistakes that I normally wouldn't make, so I want to ensure that in the loser bracket final that I don't make those same errors. Go for Trial 59, because that's my best faction. I should really not handicap myself. I should play the best faction that I have, like Traveller. It's my best faction, so I should just play it. The new maps as well, I, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and talk about the new maps, but there's one or two of them that should not have been in the map pool. Uh, Ion Storms, Nuke Truck, on one of them, I have yet to find out which one, but it can be mind controlled and captured by a Traveller player, so they're all good for Skrin factions. I expect the grand final to be a lot of Skrin and a lot of Mark of Cain. And a lot of... Uh, you, you're not going to see much GDI on the in the grand final. Nonetheless, though, I'm going to be playing this game. I'm going to be playing as the Mark of Kane. I'm going for a very unusual fast tier two because I almost got my engineer sniped. So I'm very much behind in this match already as a result of that rifleman almost sniping my engineer. Engineers have different health values and different vision radiuses, and different stats for each of the factions for some reason. But I've been having a blast uh, recently talking about R20, which is going to be the upcoming patch after April. Looking at the Tiberium Wars demo, I uh, found that the Foxhole has a decal implementation for the Foxhole, digging the Foxhole, so rather than using a waypoint, you can use the decal. But there isn't a problem with that method in that you can uh, stop your opponent from building because it makes a dummy building, a dummy object, when you use the ability, and then your opponent can't place down structures where you will uh, inevitably place that foxhole. I think there's a solution to it though. I've been talking to several modders. Uh, much better implementation of the foxhole if we can get that working. So here comes a Titan push, though I am marked of Kane, so that's gonna mean limitless EMP for me. As always, guys, I provide the games with the most action and this game is no exception. This game has been non-stop since the very start from me almost losing my engineer to getting Titan rushed down. This would have been really good if I had not been marked okay. Marked a game basically have a get out of jail free card because of all these cheap and accessible awakened EMPs. And I apologize for not posting any content in recent times but I hope that I do well in the loser bracket final and the grand final if I make it there. Uh, Shock Trip is a really good player. I have to play him in the loser bracket final. I would say it's 50 50. So uh, if I get through, that's cool. If not, then uh, all the best to whoever wins that series. But I'm a bit disappointed in that I win Zocom in that final game versus Future Armor. Not a good, smart decision at all. Basically, a free win for him. Like, all you have to do it on that map against Zocom is just spam Juggernauts, pipeline problems. The worst possible choice I could have made, and I almost won that game as well. Surprisingly, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't even be close to winning, but I somehow almost won, which blows my mind. Nonetheless, though, I'm going to be playing as the Mart of Kane here. I'm just pushing into his base with two or three Scorpion tanks just to make him spend on Titans. While he gets down his eco, I am not ecoing up myself. I'm going for a quick tier 3 queuing two beam cannons. You're going to find out what those are going to be for soon. But the Scorpion tanks are just going to reveal the map and scout for things like Orcas and Hammerheads, which is a possibility. And this game's going to get pretty wild. So I got two beam cannons. I reckon I wish this deployed in my base, which was stopped by that Titan. I can put infantry inside of it, but very limited effectiveness against steel talons because the Titan can crush that. So I'm going now for two avatars. That's why I built the two beam cannons so I can equip the beam cannons to the avatars. And in Kane Draft, the beam cannon does more damage than the main weapon of the avatar. 
The main weapon does 900 cannon damage, and the beam cannon does 1200, if I recall correctly. So the, the beam attachment does more damage, and it has the same fire rate. So I'm going to go ahead and use this avatar to equip that beam cannon. And it's going to be really good. The fire rate is going to be double, practically. Second refinery on... Phoenix's expansion does come down. I'm getting underway with my expansion. I went for four Vertigo Bombers behind this for anti-air. I'm going to use them as like a light anti-air option. So if I come up against Orcas, I can use those tail guns on the Vertigos to kill the Orcas. Plus I can use the bombs if I get overwhelmed by Titans to go in and bomb the Titans at the same time. So it's almost like I'm countering, hitting two birds with one stone. I'm actually considering the anti-air capability of the Vertigo Bombers, because those do shoot up as well. So I've got the two Avatars, I've got the Vertigos as well, which are going to fly in, stealthed of course. I'm going to see nothing there. I'm thinking about going for Harvesters, there's no Harvesters that are stacking up. If I saw two stacked up, I would do it, but I can see an Orca on the deck, so I'm going to go ahead and consider my options. Do I bomb the Orcas, or do I go for the Titans going to my base? I feel like with ample EMP, I can deal with the Titan spam. So I'm going to use this one uh, Vertigo to take out the Orca and the second Vertigo to take out the other one. So two Orcas going down there with those Vertigos as well as the airfield. So that's going to mean no aircraft. So the Vertigo is doing their job just deleting the aircraft. And now I can use their secondary ability or their primary ability to thin out some of this force destroy some of the titans and i've got those two dual beam avatars there just popping units throwing down that emp obelisk on the front line awaken being drafted which i'm going to use to emp these titans and wolverines there's no walkers remember if you add those then he could have just overwhelmed these avatars avatars doing what they can that second beam doing enormous damage and i'm focusing down the avat the titans because those are the ones doing the main damage and the Titans clean up practically everything, both of them pretty much gaining a rank in the process. So that's a very underused ability of the Avatar. I'll get, I, as well as that, I get down a second refinery on my expansion. I ha now have two uh, refineries on that field, as well as four Vertigo Bombers. But I expect Phoenix by now will have a response to the Vertigos. So we can see a ton of Pitbulls out for him. I mean, he's still really ahead in this game. I'm going to get down a war factory to get some repairs on these avatars because those are still my uh, units, my army. Vertigo is flying around the place. Uh, in the future you may find the colors of my game a little bit different. I have been swapping the faction colors. Cyan's a little bit more blue. Uh, the red color's darker. It's called Burgundy, I believe. Burgundy. Something like that. The EA had several colors that they had for the campaign missions, which I have been putting into my game, just for a change. As long as I got the RGB values, I can pretty much make faction colors whatever I want online. I can substitute the colors that are already there, and no desyncs will occur. Maybe in the future I'll include an option in the 4K mod for an alt uh, color palette. So you guys, if you want to play with different colors, then uh, there will be an option in the 4K mod installer in the future. Once I refine the colors that I think are uh, suitable alternatives. Engineer in that V35 transport, going to take over my spike, but I can always bomb that. Or use the Vertigo's tail guns and destroy that V-35, but I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. The AA damage is not too bad, and it just gets annihilated there by the Vertigo bomb itself. Three Vertigos out for me, and this will force Phoenix to uh, overspend on Pitbulls. I did just lose my tech, that's unfortunate. That's going to cancel my Avatar production, my Vertigo production, and my Redeemer. So that's unfortunate. That uh, really did set me back there. And I'm going to be forced to go back for my tech because, uh, yeah, he's got tons of anti-air, anti-infantry. I need my Redeemer if I'm to win this match. But I have those two dual beam avatars again with the veterans he rank. So I've had plenty of games to know that all hope is not lost when you have dual beam avatars. That one there promoting to the elite status. And I decide to use that one solely to clean up his 
Tip Trooper and Guardian Cannon, which he placed down just for that XP, because now uh, there's an alt win condition that has just occurred, and that is to get a heroic dual beam avatar. And you don't even have to have a full size army, you can just milk one avatar with two with two beams on it, and you'll probably do well. It is also a stealthed one. I want to fix a bug in R20 where the stealthed avatar uh, isn't fading in and out properly. That's because of the spotlight of the attack bike attachment. Even though you don't upgrade it with an attack bike, the, there is a bug where if where avatars just can't uh, fade in and out due to the spotlight that it can show. It's the same reason the screen shields flicker in and out. I addressed that though in R19, but I didn't address the Avatar 1, which is more impactful when it comes to gameplay because you simply don't know if you have uh, a stealth unit or not with a bunch of Avatars. It's hard to sometimes make out. In this case, I know which one is which because they have the ranks on them. So I've got the Avatars moving that one in there. He blew up the bridge, which is actually beneficial for me because I know now that he's not going to use that bridge to send mass pitbull my way down there. But that's a good food for avatars XP. Uh, if he makes pitbulls against this dual beam avatar, that's just going to rank up incredibly quickly. I'm looking to crush the harvesters there. I get one and I'm just going to focus down that second one. It's going to get me a lot of experience, the XP that I need to rank up again and for each rank on the avatar it deals more damage has more armor and then when it's heroic it goes insane with that twice the fire rate rage gen fires off tons of behemoths in the back i can't really hope to stop that army of his but with this avatar perhaps i can there's a marv as well avatar right there i do stop the firehawks from landing so that's great means my tech center won't be bombed and the behemoths are now in there destroying my avatars the avatars are falling one by one but i've got a heroic dual beam avatar in his base look how fast this mcv is falling and i summoned in my venoms to take out this infantry force no upgrades on the venoms but the heroic avatar they're just doing work killing absolutely everything and I know that Phoenix does not have another MCV, so that's his last remaining buildings there. This dual beam avatar will probably do it for me. If I can just hold the line in my base a little longer, I can store his advance with EMP. I've got a Temple of Nod as well, which I built just to um, dodge EMP more than like, use the super weapon itself. And this dual beam avatar is just absolutely, absolutely insane. Look how quick this building's dying. The fire rate, crazy good. And that's going to be GG. So that's that's a game highlighting Mike of Kane and just how good they can be and from what positions they can win games. Steel Talons, I know, are a bit underwhelming and that game has kind of shown their uh, weaknesses. But they will receive love in R20. There'll be a lot of changes to make Steel Talons a more competitively uh, viable faction. Uh, the Harvester health will increase from 5,500 to 6,000. And uh, Mammoth Tanks as well will also probably get a buff I will most likely undo the nerf to the turret rotation speed that EA did in patch 1.09 so that will most likely solve the issues with mammoth tanks if not then a minor range increase will be introduced so yeah that's gonna be it we're gonna go with the next game guys there's one more game to show you all with the dubbing and then I'll show you a third game where you guys can enjoy without my doubling but rather in-game commentary so yeah let's get into the second game now all right guys and we're back to do game number two which is going to take us to extraction plateau and we're playing once again as the Mart of kane phoenix will be traveler 59 he is doing the courtesy of telling me his faction because in command post has a tool a feature that shows and reveals random factions but i choose not to use the command post and also it doesn't work for me because I have my game in full screen with vsync disabled. Command post overlays don't show with that. So if command post overlays annoy you guys, then just disable vsync in your graphics card driver. Plus it reduces input lag by like 100%. 
or more. The input lag is massive in this game. A lot of people want 60 FPS. I try 60 FPS. I have the Sage Meta Tool. And that game, uh, even with the, when you have V-Sync enabled, it actually feels worse than 30 FPS with no V-Sync enabled. Uh, I, I, I mean, 60 FPS sure is great. I, I did try it out, but there is issues with animations and uh, some uh, teetering problems with units and the way that they behave and move. Uh, I prefer it the way it is now, if I'm honest even after trying the 60 FPS. Unless 60 FPS is implemented 100% perfectly with no drawbacks, then I uh, think 30 is the way to go, at least with the V-Sync disabled. So that's my verdict on that. I do appreciate um, him from, I, didn't, I forgot his name, I think it's Magistral, I think his name is. I appreciate him lending me that tool to see what it's all about. But uh, as, as of right now, it's not my cup of tea. I do have a glass of water here, so I can take a sip of water whenever I need to. I'm getting attacked by a lot of disintegrators. Looks like there's two waves. Since our tanky again, just traveler ones, they have the same health as the screen. There's no inconsistency as anymore. That was the goal of R19, to remove these inconsistencies. R20 is going to be as exciting as R19. We'll uh, laughably... Uh, discussing about introducing the mastermind gun again, like putting that gun that it had in the com campaign inside of the game, because Green Zero's nerf to the mastermind, where it has a delay before capturing anything, has made the mastermind weaker when it's only the priority that uh, has been a bit imbalanced. So maybe, maybe, I don't know, we could give the mastermind that disintegrator weapon, make it really weak so it can kill a rifleman or something no more than that that may be an option but at least it will give it something and it's not you can't say it's leaf mop because it was in the game originally in the campaign one issue with that though is the right click cursor is used for the manipulator device the mind control i think that's the real reason why it was not uh, put in the multiplayer and of course it would have been overpowered but uh, overpowered things can be tweaked in stats as always Skrin, I know you're, what you're thinking, pretty powerful faction, but uh, they've been represented as much as the others. G the only ones that haven't been seen play is the GDI sub-factions, the Zocom and the Steel Talons. I attempted Zocom and it was futile. I played on an artillery map. If you don't play on artillery maps, then Zocom is a stellar choice, but artillery maps against GDI, Jug Spam uh, with MCV pushing is very difficult to beat back. You're going to need a miracle on those maps. Slingshots as well shut down air very, very effectively with tanks and shells. Zoka walkers can't hit those slingshots because they move too quickly. But everything else on the ground is pretty vulnerable to the Zoka walkers. That's the one saving grace about playing Zocom. So I'm going for that one base fast tier three. Stealth tank. I know what you're thinking guys. This is a really weird build. You're going for a one base strategy again on tier 3 and I think it only works at Mark Decane just because of how insane their abilities are. So I'm going for the two stealth tanks. This is a pretty uh, viable strategy back in the day, especially on maps like uh, Small Town USA. We saw it in old replays. Uh, players go for this very strategy that you're seeing here. And I'm going to do it once again in 2023. I land a very sick EMP on those Seekies. He's going to see what the deal is. The, the jig is up. The stealth tanks have been revealed. And now Phoenix is 100% aware of what's coming his way. He is Trammer 59. I have stealth tanks. I'm going for the charged particle beams. I've got a tip trooper squad. But these gun walkers are going to just crush that squad. And that's unfortunate. Uh, Descent's pretty good versus Nod factions if you uh, move through the Shredder turrets. You don't have to engage and stop and engage the Shredders, you can just move straight through them and usually the Shredder turrets just miss their mark and don't hit the Descent's. Oh my god, this was really close. I almost 
lost that stealth tank there moving into the Ravagers. Ravagers can shoot and move, but that is the case in the game files, but he did not stop there to fire at me. There is a pre-attack delay. Supercharged particle beams is online, so any descent attacks he does from now on will be pretty bad. This cultist has been ordered to attack and to, to capture the stealth tanks. So I, I'm aware of a bug existing in this game where units like stealth tanks will continue to be chased in the fog of war by cultists until the cultists are destroyed or the cultists are giving a different order. Another thing about Ravagers and their tip agitation ability is they deal uh, Tiberium damage and that ignores the armor from the laser fencing. So it only requires four Ravagers to kill a refinery no matter what. Even if it's fenced, the refinery, it won't do anything to protect that refinery from the damage from that ability. But yeah, four Ravagers out for him, but he's he gets the refinery, but at the same time, I'm pretty happy about that because... I do have my supercharged particle beams. I can go for the quad tower upgrade. Upgraded from the operation center. It costs $1,500. Takes 45 seconds to upgrade. For every 15 seconds, uh, upgrades consume $500 besides the shields and the railguns for Scrin and GDI, respectively. Because, you know, $4,000 would, would correspond to. Uh, two minutes, right? When it's actually one minute thirty. But everything else besides that consumes the same amount of resources for consistency's sake. So we know uh, how much you can build off of a eco. So you can go for two production queues and an upgrade queue with two and five, for example, two refineries and five harvesters. The rabbit has all missed their mark. They tried to hit a stealth harvester, but the harvester re-stealthed. And now those Ravagers are going to be killed by those supercharged particle beam venoms. I'm upgrading the quad turrets. Quad turrets online. The last of the Ravagers gets destroyed. And now I'm going to start cloaking my base with these $500 disruption towers. Mark of Cain. This is their uh, best part of the game. They, their early game is reasonably good. But in the late game, it just gets better and better because you've got the cheap and accessible EMPs. You've got those cheap disruption towers. You've got the charged particle beam venoms, which are the best venoms in the game. That's an ill-placed refinery, but not the worst deal in the world. I mean, it is closer than long leech mining. I sell a couple of shared turrets there because I didn't think he would go back into more ravages at this point after being shut down by venoms. He knows venoms are on the map, so... I expect him to not consider going for a surprise attack in my expansion tip field. Those quad turret charged particle beam shredded turrets being deployed. I'm just going to spam those down on the front line. A gun walker there. See Tiberian ready to go. That's over three grand of resources. Which you can deploy as any nod faction. It's worth building the chemical plant just for that support power. Even if you don't intend to use the other support powers, just for that, you will net yourself some income. I see a bunch of the since there, so I was actually mistaken. He's going for more. But I have my base cloaked. No redeemer just yet for me, but I am working on my cyber egg legs upgrade. I've got a voice of cane ready to drop, which does increase the rate of fire of my infantry by 50%. It also decreases incoming damage by 25%. So if a unit deals 400 damage, then it will deal 75% of that 400 damage to the unit. And that fire right there helping my enlightened dispatch that tripod incredibly quickly. Him not able to get the area mine. He could have area mine controlled my um, stealth tanks there, but he did not. And I've got a commando. So there's enlightened and a nod commando, which I can use to, EMP to, to destroy these tripods. I can combo them with the enlightened to EMP the tripods and then just go in with the commando and see for them but buzzer swarm comes down and by the way in 1.03 aka cgf mod the 
Commando is totally busted. I was watching a clip from Bart Jones' channel uh, yesterday, and it was just total meme. It was going as fast as uh, a Ravager with advanced articulators, as you know it in this patch, aka pretty crazy. But yeah, he went pretty bonkers with the speed on that unit. I'm deploying my aim to be a little bit further on the front line so I can start focusing down these cultists. I can even use the uh, cloaking field support power, which costs three grand. Four or five cultists in the same position makes it worthwhile because I'm getting more than three grand of value out of that. And these Shredder turrets are just also a, a nuisance for him. They kill the buzzer high buzzers too, which is sort of the point. He's camping my Tiberian field with those seekers. I use the cloaking field to relinquish the mind control, get my enlightened back. Stealth tanks move in once again. I'm never I'm not going to chance my stealth tanks. I'm always going to wait until an opportunity arises before I can use my stealth tanks effectively. Summon in a tip vapor bomb. If I can get a direct hit on this commando, maybe I can kill it. I used the vapor bomb on his power plant just to make the beacon harder to see. Maybe he wouldn't have seen it and would have lost his prodigy. His buildings would have taken significant damage too. Vapor bombs do a lot of damage to structures. It is a costly support power and can be intercepted since uh, Verdict Armageddon bombers are very lightly armored. Another Devastator warship has been spotted and that's why I've got these two stealth tanks out. A commando of mine as well as running forward just to make sure that he can't mind control my stealth tanks so i snipe the cultist but not the prodigy which is what i was hoping for prodigy does escape and yeah he's doing pretty well here but i'm doing okay too i do have my two stealth tanks alive and i'm just milking those stealth tanks i'm showing what you can do with stealth tanks when micro well when used properly which is the hit and run this is the definition of hit and run. Don't get too greedy, just snipe one unit and go back. Because your opponent will expect you to be positioning your stealth tanks where he last lost his unit. So now I can take these two stealth tanks that I have and just send them elsewhere. Because I know that my opponent is aware of where they are now. So I'm going to re-stealth and send them around the place and hit him from a different angle. So even though there's a deficit of warship at the back, I'm just instead going to go for his harvesters. I've got these stealth tanks just going to focus down this harvester. Snipe that one down real quick. There we go. And I'm queuing shadow teams to kill his prodigy. I, I can either go venoms or shadow teams. Shadow teams are a bit more inexpensive, plus I don't need nearly as many. The shadow teams actually did me a big favor there because I saw a bunch of seekers with shard launchers. If I had run ran into those with my stealth tanks, I would have lost both of the stealth tanks. And finally... It's now time to go for a Redeemer. The one thing that can be mind controlled. I've got lots of Shreya turrets around my base. I've got Venoms as well. So his Prodigy can't come in. He cannot take anything over there. The Devastated of Warships have been unable to accomplish anything. And only now am I going for my Epic unit. He has been pretty busy dealing with Stealth Tanks to go for a Hexapod. But yeah, these two Stealth Tanks are still out and about. I've got the Shadow Teams ahead of the pack. Just to spot for this Prodigy, I can kill it pretty quickly in R19 because it the Shadow Teams have a 10% range increase. I see a text into there. I can even use these Shadow Teams to C4 and destroy that Tier 3 if I damage it sufficiently. But I'm just going to go out of there. There's a uh, Shard Photon Cannon. Don't want to engage into that. Harvester gets destroyed, and I've got an elite stealth tank now, so all of this hard work is paying off. In Kane Draft, you don't just get um, a rank like in StarCraft, where it tells you that you have a, a ranked unit, and that's that's all it is. No gameplay elements come to it. This instead is going to affect the stats of my stealth tank, because I've microed it. So you can play games a little differently. So you can be versus someone like Senna, who spams a lot and just Q moves a lot. You can win versus that sort of style if you control well and preserve your units. 
even from a disadvantageous position economically. And I'm building a combat support airfield, a structure that you don't see very often, but it has the same health as a regular airfield in R19. Plus it spawns with three repair drones, so you can repair three aircraft simultaneously, just like the regular air tower. The only thing it can't do is build aircraft. Those engineers incredibly quickly with the cybernetic legs. Cybernetic legs uh, applies to enlightened engineers and the Tiberium troopers. These stealth tanks will have the map scouted in advance. You don't want to go into the fog of war if you can help it because you probably will run into a bunch of seekers and with such an important and expensive asset like the elite stealth tank on the map I want to keep that alive and avoid it being mind control. It's even more risky now because it goes to heroic and that heroic stealth tank when supported by the anti-infantry like you're seeing here can dispatch on its own an army greater than itself so that's going to be it that's going to be gg that's a game versus trial 59 playing against that mind control playing against those devastated warships uh, contesting that third field with might of kane and that is going to be game over now what he could have done there was go for a bunch of storm columns storm columns counter the uh, stealth tanks well but uh, stealth tanks are pretty vulnerable to yeah to storm columns so he should have done that that game and uh, instead he had built a uh, it's, it's photon cannon not the best of ideas you want to have storm columns against those because storm columns dispatch them quickly so yeah that's going to be it i hope you enjoyed the dubbing of these two games i'm going to include a third game which i think you guys may find interesting so uh yeah stay tuned if you want to see that so i want to thank you all very much for tuning into this dubbed portion of the video and i'm going to show you all now the third game so this is going to be master leaf peace out Oh, if he made a planetary assault carry that game, he would have just, he would have, would have been a quicker heroic stealth tank. A quicker heroic stealth tank. Would have got one much faster. Construction complete. New construction options. Construction complete. The Brotherhood has interest in me. What do you recommend, Silas? Training. Go ahead. We serve the Brotherhood. Awakened. Building captured. Training. Awaken online. Building offline. Cancelled. Structure sold. Silent construction. Awaken Our will is cadence. Uh, avatars are cool when they get heroic. Against Trial 59, you're going to be very careful with promoted units because that you can't just get them mind controlled and lose. You're going to be very careful. You know, Drive is out of the tournament because he played GDI versus Mark of Kane. I think not so much the player now. I think Mark Duquesne genuinely is the best faction in the game. I really do think so. As of now. Uh, do flame tanks have any still? Do. As long as you don't attack and you stealth them with the cloaking field, yes, they have still. Uh, drive didn't play great either. Yeah, you're right, but. Well, I guess we'll do that again.
Ready for engagement. Let's go. Let's get out there. Forward. What's the plan? Enemy units sighted. Tank division. They're nothing. Units under attack. What's the plan? Beam cannon ready for engagement. Let's get out there. Scorpion. Hyperion is powerful. Let's get out there. On the move. Illuminator's prime. I have beam cannons to defend my base. Select target. Enemy base sighted. Let's go on a raid. Construction Line. complete. Let's move under attack. Let's make this Enemy quick. Defeated. You are victorious. Well. That's Mart of Kane. <laughs> <laughs> 